Welcome back to the Galley of the Sun. So tomorrow, we're gonna have some company over. So, we're, we need to cook something big. What we're gonna do is a meatloaf. Now, now, wait, wait. We're not talking about your grandmother's meatloaf. We're not talking about your mama's meatloaf. We're not talking about your sister's meatloaf. We're talking about smoked, cheesy, hatch green chili meatloaf. This is gonna be outstanding. You would do anything for love, and you would do this. And I would do anything for love. The meatloaf. So, first thing we gotta do is make our glaze. To make the glaze, I need one cup of honey. Yes, one entire cup of honey. This is gonna be a big meatloaf. About three tablespoons of diced chipotles and adobo, which is about how much is left in this jar. We need a half teaspoon of paprika, smoked of course. We need a tablespoon of deli horseradish and a half a teaspoon of Worcestershire sauce. All right, now I mix it up. Oh, as I was saying before, we're cooking this meatloaf tomorrow. So between the time I get off work and it's dinner time, I got plenty of time to smoke this thing. However, comma, the prep and then setting takes a while, so I'm prepping tonight. Once again, have a plan and you can have great meals during the weekdays. Okay. Oh, holy shit, that's good. All right, on to the next step. Got a couple steps to do with the food processor. Number one, an entire sleeve of Ritz crackers. We're gonna pulverize those puppies. In we go, a few pulses. That should do it. Now we need to shred about eight ounces of pepper jack cheese. And yes, I'm not buying the pre-shred stuff because I care about the people I cook for. I want it to be good. This makes it good. Set that aside. All right, now we need to dice up a sweet onion. Most likely it was more well-behaved, maybe not sweet. It's hard to tell with an onion. Now, a finely diced red bell pepper. Uh, you can go with or without this sticker. We prefer to take the sticker off and then dice it. But I'm not gonna judge. If you make a mess of the seeds like that, just rinse them off in the sink. Now we're gonna get 12 cloves of garlic to mince and get us a quarter cup of Cattleman's Grill Ranchero seasoning. I get mine from All Things Barbecue, like a lot of my spices and rubs. That's set aside. Get our three quarters cup of heavy cream ready. Set that aside. All right, get a quarter cup of some fire roasted hatch green chilies, diced. And the last ingredient that we'll need other than the meat is one large, extremely young, boneless, skinless chicken. Now we we'll get a big bowl and we start to mix. Now things start to take shape. Not your typical meatloaf ingredients, huh? This is gonna be good. So into the bowl goes two pounds of ground beef. What we have here is uh, twice ground, aged ground beef. Then a pound of breakfast sausage goes in. What we have here is pork homemade breakfast sausage. I didn't make the pig, but I mixed up the sausage. You'll see it in a different video. Into that goes our onions and our peppers and our garlic. We're gonna make sure we get every bit of that. And last ingredient before we start mixing is our ranchero rub. Now we're gonna get all that mixed together with our paws. All right, got that pretty well mixed. Time to wash the paws. Now we mix in the heavy cream, the hatch green chilies, the crushed Ritz crackers, and one large, extremely young, boneless, skinless chicken. Now we mix again. 
And we keep mixing until that meat and those crackers have soaked up the majority of the heavy cream and the juice from the hatch green chilies. Oh, it smells incredible already. All right, now we wash our paws and on to the next step. So now we have a nine by 13 inch baking sheet with a rim. We have some wax paper over that. Now our meat monstrosity is gonna go right in the middle of that. Now we're gonna flatten it down basically to make one giant meat sheet. I love saying that, meat sheet. Let's do it. Okay, I've got it evenly flattened out. Wash our paws and on to the next step. So I needed that rimmed pan to help form the shape of it. Now what I'm gonna try and as gracefully possible do is get this out of that pan and onto my larger cutting board because I think that's gonna make the next few steps easier. That went way too easy. Disaster has to be near. All right, so remember that honey, chipotle, horseradish glaze that we made at the beginning? Now it's its first appearance. I got a little dish of it here. We're gonna coat the uh, meat sheet with it. In fact, I'm just gonna pour it on there and then we'll paint. Just want a thin coating of this on there. <laughs> you know, I never considered myself much of a painter um, or artistic, but my gosh, that's pretty. All right, now on the next step, we layer the glazed meat sheet with cheese. Glorious shredded pepper jack cheese. Eight ounces of it. Get that as even as possible. Now we're gonna take this monstrosity and uh, we're gonna use our wax paper to help us, much like you'd use a tortilla trying to wrap up a large burrito. And we're gonna do our best to tightly roll this up. And we're gonna go this way. So here we go. Hold it. Wax paper, as tight as possible. Roll it, roll it. Okay. Roll it, roll it, roll it, nice and tight. Okay, you're not going Form it up a little bit, and then we're going to get it, we're going to get it onto this baking sheet without it exploding. I'm going to get some spatulas, because I don't trust myself. All I want to do is get it on this pan here. Under there. There's a few seconds there. I had my delts, but we made it. Okay, so now what we're going to do is cover that in plastic wrap and set it in the fridge. Let that set overnight. Let that get a little bit more solid for us. Let those flavors mingle. Tomorrow, it goes on to the grill. See you then. So here we are on meatloaf day. All that work we did on meatloaf eve is really gonna pay off for us. So we are three hours out from dinner time. This meatloaf could take two hours to cook, it could take two and a half, could take two hours, 45 minutes, and I need at least 15 minutes for it to rest. So I already have the smoker prepped. It's been going for about a half an hour. It's set for 225. I can see from here that the smoke's clear. It's ready to go. So let's get the meatloaf out there and then we have plenty of other work to do between now and dinner time. You can see some sketchy shit going on over here. We'll get to that. We uncover our gorgeous meatloaf. We are going to gently move it over to a well-greased baking pan with a rack in it because when that cooks, we don't want it setting in its own juices. Also, we don't want to take forever cleaning the pan when we're done either because there is going to be plenty of fat that renders and drips down in that pan. If you don't spray it, you're going to have one hell of a mess. Don't have one hell of a mess. Definitely much more solid than last night. There we go. Transfer is made. We got one small crack there. A little bit of squeezing, all fixed up. All right out to the smoker. All right, before it goes in the smoker, we're gonna get a meter probe and put that in there. So on this side, it's gonna give me the temperature of the meat. On this side, it's gonna give me the temperature of the smoker. Don't really need that for this smoker. Yoder smokers are awesome about keeping a consistent temperature. But 
if you have some kind of offset smoker or something, wood fed smoker, um, you're gonna want one of these much more accurate than that silly installed thermometer that comes with it. So get that into the center there. We're looking for this to go to about 165, but we're gonna be checking it regularly. Every 30 minutes, we're gonna come out here and apply some of that incredible Chipotle honey horseradish base to it. So in we go. All right, back in 30 minutes. But in the meantime, we got stuff to do in the kitchen. All right, meatloaf's on the smoker. Now, what are we gonna have with meatloaf? What goes good with meatloaf? Mashed potatoes, creamy garlic mashed potatoes. So first thing we need to do is get all of this uh, garlic here. I got 12 cloves, get it peeled. All of the amounts are down in the description. So we'll cut these at the top and bottom because that's gonna make it easier for me to peel them. So if you like what you're seeing here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. If you wanna know every time we release a new video, then hit that bell. Right now, we're releasing videos on Monday and Thursdays. Every once in a while, there's a bonus video in there though. Don't miss it. Is there something you'd like to see us cook? Go ahead and put that in the comments section. Or if you think there's something that we could have added to that meatloaf to make it even more epic, I doubt it, but you never know. Leave a comment. Set that aside, get to peeling. All right, so I got my dozen peeled garlic cloves. Behind me, I have a cup of olive oil that is heated. Now, I don't wanna fry these, but I do wanna roast them a little bit and give them some extra flavor. So we're gonna get them in that oil, keep it on a light simmer, keep an eye on it, and uh, roast these puppies for about 20 minutes. Here we go. Still keeping an eye on the garlic. Next step is, I got a mess of Yukon Gold potatoes here. That is my favorite potato for mashed potatoes and gravy, and I'm a skin on guy. You can peel them if you want. Uh, there is a little bit extra vitamins in there if you leave the peel on, but some people don't like that texture. But uh, here we go. So we're gonna cut these into about bite-sized chunks. Potatoes are all cut up. Next, we put them in a gallon size bag. If you do not have vacuum seal bags and a vacuum sealer, uh, go ahead and chuck them into a gallon or gallon and a half, two gallon Ziploc bag. All right, to that bag, we're gonna add an entire steak of butter. And on top of the butter, a good healthy pinch of salt and pepper. And we'll season these again to taste after we get to mashing them after they're done cooking. All right, I can see my light UV, so that means that water bath is 195 degrees. So here's what we're gonna do. Once that garlic's done, we're gonna add the garlic to this bag. We're gonna seal this bag up. Then we're gonna immerse it in that water. That heater, and I use a Juul, uh, will maintain that water at exactly 195 degrees. You need at least an hour and a half. It can go longer. It can go two and a half hours, it can go three hours. Next thing we gotta do is baste the meatloaf at the half hour point. Then we have another project to do. That's what's next. All righty, it's been 20 minutes, that garlic's good and roasted. So get it out and into the bag. Now we seal the bag. If you don't have a sealer, then lower your Ziploc bag into the water, let the water push the air out, get as much out as you can, and then seal that, and then drape it over the edge so no water gets into your potatoes, your butter, your salt, your pepper, and your garlic. All right, my bag is sealed into the bath. And that can just sit. All right, now we get our first coat of the base on that meatloaf. So 
All right, it's all good for another half hour. Take that epic meatloaf even to another level, it's gonna need an epic topping. We got just the thing. If you've been a follower of our channel, you've seen us do this before, and it's fun. Got my hatch green chilies, got them hit with oil. Give them a flip. Hit the other side with oil. And into a bag. Make sure you seal it. All right, back inside. Potatoes are still in their bath. Meatloaf's doing great on the grill. Time to get a topping for that meatloaf ready. So we take our hatch green chilies out of the bag. And you've seen us do it before. We're gonna get that skin off. We're gonna de-seed them and de-vein them. So we'll be ready on that next to last base to uh, decorate our beautiful meatloaf with strips of fire roasted hatch green chilies. Just lay out there. Once again, if you're worried about heat, what you're looking for is a red coloring on the outside of them. Got none. These are all deep green. And that's the big difference uh, visually between hatch green chilies and Ana Anaheim peppers is that deep green color. As we did before with the hatch green chili burgers and the smoked cheesy hatch green chili chicken enchiladas, you don't have to get all this skin off, okay? Just a good portion of it. Just a little scraping of the knife gets it off there real easy. may want to run it under a little bit of water to give you an assist with some of the loose parts, some of the seeds in there. It's all good. All right, let's get those rinsed off. Now we're going to cut these as best we can into these long strips. Not too terribly wide. Okay, about like that. And when we go out there for our last base of the meatloaf, we'll drape them across our meatloaf and then we'll put some of that base on top of them. It's gonna be excellent. All right, meatloaf is off the smoker. It is resting now. Now it's time to make those mashed potatoes. They've been sitting here in that sous vide at 195 for about uh, three hours now. So time to pull those out. It would be wise to do it with tongs. All right, now we got gloves on. Remember, that bag's been at 195 degrees for the last three hours, so it's a little hot. So, cut the bag open, dump them in our pot. We add a half a cup of heavy cream and a quarter cup of sour cream and a healthy pinch of salt and pepper. Now we mash. All right, check for salt. Oh yeah, get it into your serving dish. A little chopped green onion for garnish. And there you go, sexier than a seal scrotum. Okay, now the meatloaf. And we slice. All right, the company's hungry, so before I plate this puppy up, gotta give it a try. Piece of that meatloaf, piece of that fire roasted hatch green chili. Definitely do not skip the hatch green chili on top of it. The cheesiness, the green chili that's in the meat, the green chili that's on top of the meat, that glaze, that honey and chipotle, absolutely incredible. So I hope you enjoyed what you saw here. Join us next time on the Galley of the Sun.